Aquaculture, or what you call fish farming, is a steadily growing enterprise in Uganda with tens of farmers venturing into it annually. Welcome to this week's episode of NTV Seeds of Gold and let's learn fish farming. Our last leg in the eastern region is in the beautiful home of the humble giant, Mount Elgon, in a village called Wisheyende, where we meet a delightful and innovative farmer, Mr. Samuel Mwayafu. Samuel has mastered the art of fish farming and his unique approach has brought him nothing short of success as we get to find out more. When we told you that we were on a mission to find all the farmers that have found the gold in the seed, we were not messing around. We are now in the land of the humble Elgon giant and we are in Umbala district where we meet a farmer who has perfected aqua farming or what you know as fish farming. So we meet Samuel and we're going to learn a lot from him. Samuel, it's nice to have you on the show. You're welcome. Okay. Mm. So tell us um, about um, your enterprise. How many ponds are we looking at here? At the, at the site, I have, uh, I have 17. Okay. Yes, I have 17. That's impressive. Yes. So how did you get started? Uh, for someone who wants uh, to start this, they would like to know on average how much they are looking at, how much land, how many ponds can they start with? Mm, this uh, this uh, type of farming mm. is good, uh, but uh, it, it wants someone to be patient. Uh, because uh, I started by with seven pounds but uh, because of my patience i have uh, uh, i have benefited okay. uh, first first of all uh, when you want to start this uh, type of farming you could start with the three pounds mm. the one pound is not good mm. for you to start this uh, type of farming ah, so do the fish get bigger at different Sizes. Okay. Yeah. So on average, how much are we looking at here? In these 17 ponds, mm. uh, I, I'm having 12,000 12, fish. Oh. 12. That is very nice. When it comes to fish farming, sorting is key. Samuel knows that in order to maximize growth and maintain a healthy ecosystem, it's important to separate the fish into different ponds based on their sizes. When you have three ponds, uh, this size, the first two months, you, you sort. You can find some at 150 grams. Find some at 100 grams. Mm. One, two, some, uh, the majority is at 200. So you set the 200 grams mm. in a different pond. They could feed, you could feed them eh? uh, well. Because when you, you, you leave them in one pond, it, it, they disturb those small ones yeah. to feed. Eh? Mm. So you could also, that sorting also is, mm. when you want every, every two months, you sort. Mm. Every two months, you sort. Eh? It helps you it so much that eh? these fish, are they growing? All the feeds which I'm giving them are, are good or are not good. Okay. That is how uh, we do this work. All right. So why do we have, um, we've noticed that there's a lot of vegetation around. Is it, is it um, something that helps with the ponds or? Yes. I, it is. Mm. Uh, one, this overgad. Mm. Eh? It is a feed. Yes, there is uh, something which you, you say that is green matter. Mm. That green matter we have to, to mix in the fish. Yeah. So you can see, you can find here the, the coriandra. This coriandra is also, when I change it eh, into a green matter so that uh, I mix in my feed so that I easier the what? Eh? I the cut feed. the cost. Yes. Eh. So you spoke about feeds. Where do you get the feeds and what are you feeding them? We have uh, got uh, some companies from Kenya. Uh, you, you, you could go to those specialists which can train you that this they, they, they have they mix each other. They have, uh, they, so when you try, you, you base somewhere where 
it can do uh, the feed is which is good mm. and which can, which can had made your fish grow faster yeah. so let's let's look at the fingerlings where can people buy them from if they want to get started or where did you buy yours from mm. okay mm, when you started this uh, when you want to enter in, in it mm. uh, first get someone who is technical an expert uh, an expert don't uh, just do it anyhow mm. because i started uh, i said myself anyhow but when i went and uh, visit uh, the dfo trained me i said oh <laughs> i've wasted my time my i wish i i first uh, visited this office <laughs> But there is more to fish farming than meets the eye. Did you know that after harvesting fish, you can actually use the water as fertilizer? Well, Samuel has discovered this gold, providing him with an excellent organic alternative to nourish his crops and his pockets when he sells to other farmers. Value mm. addition. Uh, I also uh, uh, thought of it mm. very much. But I found that before selling this fish mm. Mm, or after harvesting you have to utilize the, the remaining water that is pure fertilizer it is it is and a very very good one okay hey. do you sell it do yes. you <laughs> yes i i i, I pack in in jerrycans and sell i sell that's nice. Yes. How much are we looking at per 20 liter jerry can? Uh, uh, 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you, you, you can just look on this water. But mm. it, it changes the water. Because you, you feed the fish for nine months. Yes. Mm? You, you, you pour the feed. Those remaining ones they, go back. Yeah. Eh? And it's also, it helps itself yes. in the water. Yeah. Eh? So the soil and the water changes into the fertilizer. That's amazing. That's so amazing. for me, at my home, mm, I use this water. Mm, pour in the holes when I'm going to plant maize. When, uh, when I, I spray the, the holes when I'm going to uh, to plant the uh, beans. Yeah. Uh, Everything, even hey, you can find everything very healthy. <laughs> hey, hey, this one is. I don't buy the, the fertilizer. It's right from here. Yes, yes. So that's I have. Hey, uh, I have too much snail shells here, which I also harvest. Yes. Yes. Hey, there are snails here, hey, and you can find the, uh, in the market. There. Ah, you go in the. Uh, those who, 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 who do poetry farming, yes. hey, that you, uh, we, we want to snail, shells, mm. shells. I have shells here. So you I go and sell. <laughs> <laughs> when I have this, I dry it, so terrible thing. I poke it. That's amazing. Hey, hey. So, how do you sell them in kilograms? In the what? The, the shells. The shells. Mm. Oh, every, every kilogram is. Uh, 15,000, 15,000 That's very hey. nice. So, uh, we... Uh, <laughs> different fish types attract different customers and of course, come with their own set of challenges. As Samuel explains, meeting the demands of customers who prefer a specific fish can sometimes be quite a hurdle. Uh, the fish dying, it depends to the water levels. Mm. Uh, especially in a drought season, mm. yeah. when he, the, 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 the water lowers, uh, so that is a problem because the temperature changes. Yes. Uh, uh, and because of this water, it depends because to, 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 to the, the, the customers who use the users. Mm. Eh? First money I, I got from the fish, oh. I bought a generator. Yeah. Eh, eh, water pumping. So you pump. So eh, I pump. Yeah. Uh, I pump from down, I have pipes, mm. so I pump. Only the problem is this uh, birds, yes. uh, snakes, 
this this lizard yes there is also the thieves but thieves now they have put the the, the watchman but eh? Mm. They, are, they are challenged I know. Uh, because uh, there are types of fish. Yes. Mm. Well, for for me here, I have three types. Yes. I have a mirror cup. I have a tilapia. Mm. I have a, uh, I have a catfish. Yes. Uh, so and the, the customers, uh, uh, some doesn't you want the tilapia mm. and some that is they want the catfish okay. and you have only for oh, catfish in your pot <laughs> so it was a, <laughs> it was a challenge to yes. the joys of customer satisfaction but fear not because samuel has learned how to navigate these challenges with grace and finesse he's truly a master of his craft before we continue our journey let's take a moment for a quick commercial break when we return, we'll delve into the fascinating world of markets, explore the challenges faced by fish farmers, and hear from our expert on this captivating industry. Thinking out of the box is essential for success in any industry, and fish farming is no exception. Samuel's unique perspective on things has opened doors to new opportunities, and he's here to inspire and guide others on their own journey to prosperity. When you're a starter, mm. you need to start with the three, okay. or maybe two, mm. because you know that I shall uh, sort. Uh, sort position and those which we sort you know exactly that uh, uh, in such and such a pond mm. there are such number of what of fish yeah eh? when you get a, a customer you tell him or her exact number you have eh? because uh, you can say that you uh, are raising one thousand you come with the farmer here you find when the fish is not there yeah, so you there you get the market knowing exactly thing you have yeah mm -hmm. uh two for us here in the Mali, mm, i encourage eh, people to enter in this business why because uh in Mali we don't have lakes yes eh? There is a market and now they have changed them. I have Mbali as a city. Eh? <laughs> so we have Mbali city, we have Mbali district, we have so many town castles mm. now. Eh? Every, every time things are changing, market is growing yes. every now. Eh? Every time is, the, the, the market is growing. Yeah. Mm. And now, for me here, uh, there is uh, at times, um, like uh, I had the, the, the two two schools from Mbali booked here mm. to come and learn from here because they don't have anywhere uh, so where fish to <laughs> 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 can find someone learning the fish. So you're yeah? training them yes, here. Yes, training. That's amazing. Yeah. Do, you, do you charge for the training yes, when the schools yeah. come? Uh, I judge. Mm. I judge because I have my boys here, yes. casual workers, so I have to pay them. <laughs> Because when you book to come and be trendy here, hmm, you pay 30000 Yes. And uh, you give the deep fry uh, you a fish. Oh. Uh, and you... Yes! <laughs> yes! That's uh, Because uh, you, you trend when you taste. <laughs> because we, we, we use it to practical. So you have an idea of what it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the, the markets. You harvest and then you sell, of course. Yes. So... How are the markets? How, what, how much do you make on average? Say mm, the market. The market is not is not bad because for us in Bali, mm. eh, uh, we don't have. Uh, we are not at uh, as as Ginja and the Kampala where where Lake Victoria is near. <laughs> <laughs> for for us, it is an advantage for me as summer. Yes. Uh, because here. Uh, uh, a, 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 very com a very person wants to get fish. Mm. Eh? 
only the, the, the money <laughs> is a problem to some of them. Yes. But otherwise, uh, the market, uh, sometimes they are, I, have, uh, I have targets. There is the Christmas. Yes. There is the Easter. Easter. Mm. There is the Independence. Mm. Eh? Those are oh, one the big of, days. Eh, those are one, <laughs> one of my targets. Yes. And the, another uh, target, I have uh, some restaurants like uh, at uh, Nabumali mm. Town Council, uh, Mbali there. Uh, I have orders yes. every Sunday. Uh, there is a restaurant who want every Sunday six kilograms. Six kilograms. So yeah. how much do you sell a kilogram? Mm, a kilogram is the twelve thousand. Ah, yeah, that's uh, good. So demand is, uh, is uh, good because uh, I eat every every weekend. Mm, eh? That's no. one hundred and. So you know at least hey, you're, that you're is uh, that's, that's, that's very hey. good too. So we are going to take a very interesting tour of the ponds and who knows, maybe we'll catch a fish, maybe we'll eat the fish, I don't know. And after that, it's the expert of Enya. But how big is this pond? Uh, this, this pond is, uh, is eight. Eight times, times fifteen. Eight by fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So we have here two types, but mirror cap is in that one. Okay. Yeah. Mirror cap, and even if even if you pour the the feeds, mm. you can see it. <laughs> Every uh, big fish, mm. it eats only three grams. Mm -hmm. Three grams a day. That is African print. There's a bit of blue, green, yellow. There's a gentleman coming to you with the name of the day. Yeah. And this one, hmm? mm. uh, it, 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 you can feed it anyhow. Yeah. Anytime, any. Okay. Because this, it eats wherever food you bring. What? Which makes it easy to it take. Is easy. To take care yeah. of. Yes. Yeah. So the smaller ones are tilapia. Nice. And how many are in here? Here. Here there is 2,000. Okay. Welcome to the Expert Opinion. So with me is Joseph, the District Fisheries Officer here in Mbale. And he's going to give us insight on, on the markets, on the challenges, and how they're being mitigated. Uh, it's nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Sheila. Okay. So question number one. You are the walk here. You're the expert. So the farmers come to you uh, when it comes to fish farming. What are some of the challenges that they are facing? The challenges that farmers come with are quite many and they range from the quality of the fingerlings, the quality of the fields, and then uh, the designs of their ponds. But to start with, uh, if you're planning to do fish farming, you need to set the foundation right, and that's the ponds. You need proper ponds before you think of the feed, uh, the feed and the fingerlings. The fingerlings, I mean the young ones, the young fish. That's the, the ones you put in the pond. Mm. So those are the challenges that they majorly face. Okay, and how do you help them mitigate these challenges? Uh, yes, as uh, the district, we do quality assurance in terms of feed uh, quality mm. and then the fingerling quality. We identify sources, reputable sources, not just any source. Uh, that farmers go to source the fingerlings. Mm. Now, we have accredited suppliers and accredited hatcheries for the young fish. So we recommend them to pick the fingerlings from those mm. farmers. 
main for feeds we also have defined suppliers with quality feed mm. i know in the open market anyone can tell you yes we have quality feed we have quality feed but when you verify you ascertain that this is right for the fish or not right for the fish mm. but we recommend that they use floating feeds it comes with a cost but it's far better it pays mm. rather than picking any other feed okay so when it comes to being cost effective are there some uh, methods that you would train them in when it comes to what they have already on their land say someone is a farmer with other more, you know with other vegetables other other enterprises are there, are there some of these enterprises that could uh, help yes we have a number of enterprises that uh, would help you know a fish uh, usually uh, when people look at it they think it should consume the refuse mm -hmm. which is not right per se but sometimes this is what farmers have available you you have produced maize now you look at the maize brand and that that could be one of uh, the, the byproduct yeah. that we get from other enterprises to feed into uh, the aquaculture industry and that in one way we are recycling nutrients instead of making it waste you putting it into yours yes okay okay that's great um what 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 are some of the aquaculture um practices that someone who's starting up should consider yes for someone who is starting up uh, aquaculture as a business uh, should consider uh, the type of fish that you want to raise mm. because not every fish is consumed in every region okay. for us here in uh, mbali district people prefer tilapia and if you went in for tilapia that would be great for you mm. you also need to look at certainly uh, the market you have what does it require so that you are able to produce as per mm. the market not producing when you reach marketing is yes, not there yes 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 so those are some of the basics okay you mentioned you mentioned uh, the markets what do the markets look like here in Mbale, uh, say Uganda, um, in general, and do you help these farmers find the markets? Yes. Uh, now, the markets in Uganda are categorized. Mm. We have the local markets where farmers can sell to uh, middlemen who take their fish to maybe the central markets, like the central market we have in Mbale. Then we have the regional market where farmers bulk the fish and clients come buy from the farm and take far to congo markets drc mm. this kenya is a regional then we have the international markets that's majorly for the outside world that's when you've established a much bigger site yeah. bigger farm with capacity to produce to, to produce in multiple Tons. How much? How much are we looking at? We are looking at ten tons and <laughs> in a space of in a space of one week, two weeks. Yes, but would you say it's 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 a venture that um, is is very lucrative and would survive for years to come? Because we're looking at the fact that uh, aquaculture in Uganda is has been has been in existence uh, since the 1940s, and now it's still it's growing, if per se, right? So would you say it's something that could last another 40, 50 years? Sure, uh, actually I would say aquaculture is one of the fastest growing, not only in Uganda, yeah. the world over. Mm. It's one of the fastest growing industries. So, so it's definitely. lucrative and it's the way to go. Mm. Because if you look at the capture fish, the fish from the lakes, the stocks are dwindling. So we are lef left with the option of producing uh, your own fish. And that means there's a big business opportunity. Yes, yes, I hear you. Wow, now this was quite the episode, full of charm, full of excitement, and hell, full of fish. Well, that's our episode for today. We will see you again next week. Don't forget to keep the comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold.